Welcome back, everybody. The show continues as the first Mark seminar of the year 2016 is Silent Hero. Joining me now are FD student Lazaro Canata and his teacher, Anthony Blas. And Anthony actually spent a year researching the life of Francisco N.F. Blas, the sole person from Guam to fight in the infamous D-Day battle in Normandy in World War II. Gentlemen, welcome to Harmon. Half a day. Half a day. Hi. All right. So, Tony, that's amazing, the research you've done. Well, first, let me ask you, um, is there a direct relation between you and Francisco N.F. Blas? Not that we can establish at this point. We've mm -hmm. been looking, but um, at the closest, he might have been my grandmother's second or third cousin. That's okay. It's not an immediate, uh, it's a different family name. But. Well, well, that's amazing lineage, you know, obviously and everything. And, and to think that our island was represented in, you know, what was a uh, very pivotal moment in World War II. Yes. Uh, that's, a, that's a very proud moment. What, what have you learned from your research about uh, what Mr. Blas was able to, his involvement in the campaign? Okay, well, first of all, we researched together. It wasn't just me. It was... Um, part of something called the Normandy Institute. They choose 15 teacher student teams nationwide and each uh, individual will research one person from their state that died at the, on the shores of Normandy or offshore. And so we learned quite a bit about his, um, his uh, life. He enlisted just before the war in 1940, I believe it was, in July of 1940. And um, he was in the military for about three and a half years before he perished in, uh, at Normandy. And on the, the day that Guam was invaded, he would have been somewhere down near um, Indonesia in support, getting ready for, well, at that time they weren't at war, so they were just patrolling on their way to the Philippines. Hmm. So he missed Pearl Harbor by about, a, he was in Hawaii about a month before Pearl Harbor was attacked. Wow. So. so Lazaro, what did you learn? And tell me about some of the methods you used to, to research. Um, well, a lot of the things that we did was uh, look for um, family members of Mr. Uh, Francisco Blas. So we went to the Micronesia Area Research Center and they have a really great uh, archive system where they have the family trees and we were able to get uh, his parents' names uh, and one of his sisters that were alive, uh, Julie, um, Julie Blas, who is actually alive today. Julia, pa Julia Blas, uh, yeah, she's alive she's today. Now, um, I think Sablon is the last name now. But Sablon, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, that's the, one of the, the siblings that's still alive today. The and we were able to track down um, more recent relatives. Uh, one interesting thing that we found was that uh, his sister's uh, great-granddaughter actually married one of my teachers that, 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 that go to Father Duenas. Really? Yeah, uh, Colin Perez. Uh, his wife is the great-granddaughter of um, Julia, and that's the sister of Francisco Blas. So what an interesting connection. That is really interesting. So I also understand that, you know, it wasn't just research about, about the man and his involvement, but you were also able to lay a wreath at the grave marker. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Yes. Can tell me about that. Mm, well, uh, at the, uh, to end the Normandy Institute, each team, each uh, student teacher team uh, presents a eulogy, uh, a little thing that they want to say um, to just honor the sacrifice of their, their silent hero. And so for us, we laid a, a wreath that we carried all the way from Guam straight to Normandy, uh, a wreath we laid there um, with the Guam flag and a rosary. And we, uh, we did the eulogy there, and it was just a, a really great time. Hmm. Now tell me, how was that? Because, I mean, it's one thing to, you know, to study and to investigate from an academic standpoint, but then to actually get there and, you know, to be, to participate in something that's a very human and very, you know, a very solemn moment and everything like that. What did that mean for each of you? We'll start with you, Tom. That makes a big difference. I mean, you can read about it in a book, you can see it on TV, but until you're actually there and you can walk the beach where all that action took place, and it's, it's a very powerful experience. It um, really makes it personal, really puts a, a personal touch on it. You, you realize that all those numbers, that all those graves there at that cemetery are, represent people who died and lost family, or family lost them. So it's, it's a very personal, very powerful um, experience. It's, and it's his sacrifice certainly wasn't for nothing. Yes, exactly. Well, do you feel as maybe, Lazaro, maybe you, on behalf of the island being able to do that, that you maybe gave his family, you know, like a, uh, maybe some closure or, you know, like were able to honor him in that way? Yeah, I felt very uh, proud and honored that I was uh, selected to do this. Um, when I did the eulogy, I felt kind of bad because I didn't really know him as much as his family did. But uh, just saying that and saying all those things uh, about him, it kind of made him come alive. He seemed like a, like a friend to me. And the fact that I knew he died, uh, it kind of hit me hard because I've never um, had a friend that died in the military. So to finally meet someone and learn so much about him and to realize that he is actually gone, uh, it was a little uh, hard for me. Mm -hmm. um, just a couple weeks ago, I. Uh, did the eulogy over at the Tistel Newman Center. Um, uh, one of my, one of the ways that uh, I 
Mm. Down in Sumai, of course. Yeah. yeah. So I, I performed the eulogy, and one of uh, the relatives were actually there. And I saw them tearing up a little bit. And they were talking to me, and they said that it really made them feel alive to them, someone they've never seen before. They've never met before, an uncle that they never knew so much about. It made him feel alive, and I was so honored by that. All right. Well, hopefully, like the work that the two of you have done, very noble work, and um, hopefully Guam history books will now reflect the sacrifice that Mr. Blass made so long ago. So tell you what, we got to run and we got to go to commercial break, but um, when is the seminar and at what time? The seminar is Wednesday evening at 5.30 at UOG at the class lecture hall, mm -hmm. and um, it should be about an hour, hour and a half. All this right. will be the second time we pre presented this story. We did it a week and a half ago down at the Warren Pacific Museum. All right. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you. It's thank a you. very important part of our, of our culture and our history that certainly doesn't, doesn't need to be not known. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank, thank you. you. All right. So stay tuned. We are back after this.